and refine the existing procedures, existing models, and existing systems. And as far as academic research is concerned, the research can be a small assignment submitted by a student, or it can be a PG level project, or an MP level dissertation, or a PhD <laughs> thesis, or a post doctoral research, or even <laughs> the research papers, conference papers, book chapters, books published by our faculty members, and the minor, major, and all kinds of research projects being undertaken by our faculty members. So research can be anything. And what about the parts of uh, various components of this research output? If you take a journal article or a conference paper or a book chapter, very, very basically uh, it will comprise of components like title, author's affiliation, abstract, keywords, introduction, then review of literature, methodology, data analysis, discussion, suggestions, conclusion, then bibliography. And if you talk about uh, thesis, dissertations, or project reports, they invariably have five components, namely introduction, review of literature, methodology, data analysis and interpretation, findings, suggestions, and conclusion, which will be ended with a lot of appendices. Fine. But when you are preparing your research paper, maybe a journal research article, or maybe a conference paper, or a book chapter, or a book, or your thesis, whatever you have, it is not possible to do your research on your own. Just with your own ideas, your own concepts, your own methodologies, you may not be able to proceed your research work. Basically, we depend on others. We depend on the works which were already contributed, already done by the previous researchers of your chosen field. You need to find out what were the contributions of my four researchers, what they have actually done, what were their objectives, what are their methodologies, what kind of data they collected, what were their findings, what are their suggestions, and what are their conclusions. So you need to go back to find out what was done in your chosen field of research work. So naturally and obviously, if somebody says that you have to do your own research, you should not copy anything from anybody. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, you cannot do the kind of research. Your research should be always to be placed in the context of the world of research. So obviously we need to and we have to borrow the ideas of others. We have to take the contents of others. What and all, for example, when you're writing your introduction part or you're writing your background part of your research paper, you need to include the definitions, the theories, the history, the development of the concepts, what you're talking about. So naturally, you have to borrow the ideas of others. You have to take the contents of others. And secondly, review of literature. So you should critically analyze the research works which are already undertaken in your chosen field to trace out the objectives, the methodology, findings, and suggestions. So review of literature is very, very important. So if you want to do a review of literature, naturally you have to take the research outputs of others. And apart from that, once you have done your research work, you got your findings, now you need to do discussion. What is the discussion? You need to inform your users to what extent your findings are in line with the findings of others, to what extent your findings are contrasting or disagreeing with the findings of others. So that kind of discussion you should include always in your research paper. So either for your introduction part, or for review part, or for discussion part, for all three parts, you have to borrow the ideas of others. You should take the contents of others. You should trace out what was done already by previous researchers. So what uh, we used to do, we can ask the senior professors, they will tell us. So they used to go to library, uh, sitting for hours and hours. They will read the books, journals, thesis, research papers. They will take notes. So that kind of plagiarism, that kind of uh, uh, issue of copying others was not uh, so high in those days. But 
thanks to internet we have got lot of resources on a mouse click away plenty of information is available you have to just go and uh, get the materials of your choice okay i would like to see uh, and tell you a few cases see there is a professor from uh, indian institute of information technology the professor is the daughter of uh, congress rajya sabha mp that matter was taught with the placards because one of her article on public distribution system had uh, the contents copied from some other resources fine and the second case is there is a very famous uh, usa pop singer called john bon jovi a case was filed against this particular singer for 400 billion us dollars because he had copied the lyrics of somebody and he had uh, used that particular lyrics in his song and he minted on that money like anything and the third case a student called thomas who was an engineering student in ohio university when he submitted his thesis it was rejected because the professor told that there's a lot of plagiarism so the student was wondered so he just went to the university library he pulled out all the thesis on engineering he started uh, conducting a comprehensive analysis and he presented a report stating that there is a set of thesis around 30 to 40 thesis which have got lot of materials copied from many sources so based on this report the inquiry committee was held and you will not believe one thesis was revoked and more than five thesis were asked to read write and uh, the professor was uh, terminated from the job so all things happened because of only one thing they are all copied things from others okay so let us see what is this problem the widely known menace plagiarism in academic field see the term plagiarism is a latin word it means to kidnap so what does it mean it means that see you want some materials methods concepts ideas definitions of others you read them you read their articles you read others papers you take the content from them and you are using that content as a part of your research paper maybe in the introduction part maybe in the review part maybe in the discussion part you include others content others ideas others methods others procedure procedures others findings others suggestions but you show that you show as if they are your own without thanking them without acknowledging them without properly citing them you are incorporating all the ideas of others and show that they are all your own as if it is you who have found those methods it is you who have found such kind of for conducting this and uh, passing them as if they are your own in your research paper that is called uh, plagiarism fine so there are many many names it is a literary theft it is a copying pasting stealing academic dishonesty or idea theft see in tamil they say karuthu thirittu for plagiarism and this is how the result of uh, plagiarism when people start copying from one after other you see what happens to original idea fine say so question comes here why do people plagiarize what makes people go and copy the contents of others what is the reason for this when you analyze the points from the point of view of the faculty members there are many reasons the faculty have got lot of points they say that uh, they don't have time they were busy in their uh, routine walks so they don't have time to sit and uh, write things on their own and sometimes to their parental and colleague pressure maybe in your own department your friend might have published lot of papers so such kind of these number of papers and sometimes there is a problem 
or laziness and think on our own, we just copy the ideas of others and paste. And sometimes many people, they complain that, say they have fear. Sir, my writing is not good. My English sentence construction is not good. My way of presenting is not good. And if I present in such a poor quality, my paper will not be accepted. And that is why I take the contents of the highly cited, very good papers. A fear of failure. Or they have kind of pressure to publish because they want to go into next step, maybe associate professor or some other destination, or they want to get promotion. So they get a lot of pressure so that they copy things from others. So there are many reasons why uh, faculty members indulge in this kind of plagiarism. You know, what about the students? What about the points of excuses given by students? Many students say that, sir, we are busy to prepare the paper. We got a lot of assignments, homework, this, that, and all. So we don't have much time. So naturally, we just go and copy things from others and uh, submit it. And some students claim that, sir, everyone does it. It's not only one I who uh, undertakes this kind of copying work. Everybody does. So I am also doing it. Fine. And there are some kind of uh, students, they have say that uh, it's a lot of pressure from teachers and parents. They expect too much from me. They want me to get A grade in all the subjects, in all the areas. How is it possible, sir? So actually, I go and copy things from others. And sometimes the students say that so the topic what I got is very boring. I don't like this topic. I am not interested in this topic. When I asked some other topic, I was given something else. So naturally, obviously, when the topic is not interesting, when I don't like the topic, naturally I go and uh, copy things from others. And even some students, they even go and sort of aggregate and say that hey, it's okay, no problem. If I don't get caught, no, no problem. Let me let me continue this practice. So there are many, many such excuses for students why they go for uh, plagiarizing. Fine. Now, let me tell you something about the types of plagiarism. See, please understand. My purpose is not to teach you what are the various ways by which you can plagiarize. Okay. My intention is that once you know the different types of plagiarism, you'll be aware of not committing such kinds of plagiarism. That is my intention. Okay. And uh, the plagiarism can be broadly divided into two groups, intentional and non-intentional. What is intentional? You are copying the contents of others knowing that you're copying. Very, very intentionally you're doing it. For example, you download free papers from the internet. You just go to internet, you download the free papers which are available there. Or if you have a subscription, you download a paper from a database and you are going to present this paper as if they are your own. You know very well that these papers are not yours. You're taken from some other sources. But while presenting, you, know, you present as if they are all your own papers. So the intention plagiarism. And sometimes, even people go and buy papers. They pay money in the market. Uh, plenty of stores are there. Okay, paper sellers are there. If you go to them, they will prepare and uh, give a journal article. They will prepare and give you a book. They will prepare and give you a research paper or uh, even thesis. You go and pay amount, your thesis is ready. So that way people pay money, purchase their research papers and they publish. It's an intentional plagiarism. Fine. See, one particular person, he has downloaded a paper. He just to remove the name of the author and he will write his own name and he'll publish it. Okay, plagiarism of authorship. Fine. We talk about other kinds of intentional plagiarism. See, many times, whatever students uh, do is that whenever some project or topic is given to them, they will go and refer to the same kind of similar kind of work submitted by previous batch students, last year students, uh, year before last year students. So they go through the works done by previous batch students and they will copy uh, as much as possible the few uh, limitations here and there. So they copy. That's an intentional plagiarism. And sometimes people are very clever. They read an article in English. They'll understand and uh, they will write a Tamil article. Okay, Content is taken from an English language article. Same thing. It's not his content. He's taken from others. But he will present it in Tamil as if it is his own individual discovery. Intentional plagiarism. And even sometimes the very popular plagiarism is cutting and pasting. So you go to many sources, you copy something from each and every source, you bring a few things for, from introduction, few sources for uh, review of literature, this here and there, and you merge it, you stitch all the sources, and you get a new paper. Even that is a very, very intentional plagiarism. See, it's a whole thing, complete plagiarism. 
you take the entire paper or the major section of the paper you copy from others 